about the uh, DNS and, and how your computer uh, will um, try to connect to the internet using uh, IPv6 or IPv4. Uh, let's do some exercise and, and, and look up a bit uh, about the IPv6 that we have here in, uh, in, 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 the, in the room. So this is a, a website, it's portal ipv6.lagnit.net. Uh, we have uh, stats, uh, documents, uh, training material here. We are gonna include this material here, blah, blah, blah. So uh, the first thing is, is, okay, you are connecting to V4 or V6 to a website. So how do you know is, is which protocol is, is, is using? In this case, well, the, the, the answer is that it's not very easy to, to, to know which protocol you are using. In this case, uh, we have a, 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 a an interesting add-on in, in this web page that it tells you the IP or IPv4 address that you are using. In this case, we are connecting uh, using uh, IPv6. Uh, if you were connecting using IPv4, uh, it will give you, it will tell you there, well, this IPv4, and this is your, your IPv, IPv4 address. In this case, it's IPv6. Is that, is that, that is the uh, IPv6 address that my computer uh, has. Uh, we will see now, I'm gonna show you that my computer has, has several addresses, and we will see why we are seeing this now. But what happened, okay, you know that you are connecting in V6, so it, this site probably will help you if you are deploying your network or if you have some problem, you can tell your user, okay, go to portal IPv6 uh, from Lagnix so I can see, you can see which is your, your IPv6 address. Uh, but not every site uh, supports this. For example, if I go uh, to Google, am I using IPv6 or before? I don't know. However, if you are, uh, uh, if, if you observe and, 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 and you notice, the I have uh, some numbers here in, in, my, uh, in, my, uh, in my bar. Normally this, uh, you won't see this uh, in, 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 in your normal browser. Uh, it's it's, it's an add-on. I, I think uh, it's called IPv6 foo. We will see uh, uh, the extension in, in Chrome. But basically, it's gonna tell you if you are connecting in V4 or in V6, and also if you click like I did here, uh, it will tell you what is the IP address, and it will tell you which sites are you connecting in V4 or V6. In this case, I think that the first one is the, and the second one, uh, sorry, the third one are Facebook addresses. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, there are Google addresses. Let's see if we can, yeah. So the first one is, uh, an IPv6 address of Google. Uh, the second one is probably a, a, some API that is retrieving. That one, it, it, it was reached uh, by before. Uh, then uh, another one, V6, before, V6. So it depends. So, so, so there are sites that are accessed via V4 and V6. I will, I, I'm gonna explain you in a bit, mm, f uh, a bit later why we see some in V6 and V4 because so you see all of those are, are, are Google uh, websites. But some are in V4 and V6, even though that Google support V6 in probably all their services, or they claim that, that they, they, they support in all their services. Uh, nevertheless, I, I'm, I'm sure that sslgstatic.com, uh, I'm sure that probably that site uh, works in V6, but my browser is connected in V4. I'm gonna explain you later why this happened. What I w wanted to point out it was the, the example, how you can check what is happening. Well, you can install one of these uh, 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 extensions. Uh, let's see if I can open uh, my settings, uh, probably here, uh, extensions. Yeah, IPv foo is the name. So if you want to install it in, 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 in Chrome, it's IPv4, IPv and it's gonna tell you uh, how are you connected to the internet, in V6 and V4, when you don't have a site that, as, as, as the portal IPv6 tells you, how are you connected. Uh, Firefox also have similar functionality. In this case, is a uh, Latnik uh, main page. Uh, 
again, there are some content that is in V6 and V4. In this case, the, uh, the, uh, the web page Blagnik is, uh, is in V6. Uh, the analytics from Google are in V6. And some, uh, the, the, there are, uh, in this case, probably some uh, uh, content uh, from Twitter. Twitter doesn't support V6 yet, so that's why there, there is before. In fact, if we go to Twitter here, it's all, uh, almost everything in before. So twitter.com before. They have analytics from Google. In this case, those analytics that they have in the, the web page are accessed uh, via, uh, by, uh, with uh, IPv6. So that's how you can uh, check how you are connecting. So let's see, we were talking about a, um, a how a, a host get a, a, an address. So let's, let's, let's see what happened with my computer when with the IP address. So let's, if you want to know, uh, in, in Unix, you want, you want to know the, uh, the configuration of, the, of your computer, which uh, are the, the IP, uh, you can check with uh, if config, it will show you the configuration of the interface. So in this case, uh, this is the, the, uh, the configuration of my uh, Ethernet zero, in this case is uh, my Wi-Fi. So uh, there is uh, my uh, MAC address here. There is uh, my IPv4 address. In this case, uh, it, this is my IPv4. And if you check, I have three uh, IPv6 address. So let's start uh, checking on it. This is the uh, local link, the link local. So it starts with FE80. And the other part is the uh, this part of the address is generated using my uh, MAC address. If you can see here, there are some uh, numbers that, uh, uh, and, uh, that are there. For example, BD3D BD is this part of the, of the, of the address, of, from the MAC address. Then we have the 5426 is this part of the, the MAC address, also the 96. And then we have some uh, bits that are uh, um, included by the operating system so they can uh, complete the, the 64 bits. So that's how uh, the computer is using the MAC address to generate uh, its own uh, link local address in IPv6. Also, if you check, well, this is the link local. This, the, the, this um, address is used only to connect to the, to, to the computers in the same network. So it, it, won't help, it, it, it won't be useful to connect to the internet uh, because it's only for, 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 for the link local. Then I have a global address as well. This is with the prefix that the prefix is given uh, by the router that we have in the network. So the router is advertising that prefix. Uh, my computer gets that prefix and using the MAC address, it generates its own IPv6 address. If you check, well, this part is the same as this one. And it's, gen and, and it's generated Use, generated using by use, using the, um, uh, the 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 MAC address. If you check that address, and if we go again to uh, the uh, portal IPv6, doesn't look like the same. Remember, see this this end like D one seventy. And my MAC address doesn't, didn't have that number. See, the D70 is another one, but I have this, I have two, two addresses. One is that is generated by my, uh, uh, using my MAC address, or the MAC address of the interface, and there is another completely different, that is in fact the address that is using my computer to connect to the internet. So that's why we have two addresses here. One is generated by uh, using the MAC address, but the ITF or some people uh, concerned about privacy, they said, okay, but you generate your, your, uh, your IPv6 address using your, your MAC address. So, and it's this one. If I move to another network, 
that part will be, it's gonna be the same. The last part is gonna be the same because it's gonna be generated with my MAC address. The, the first part, it will be different because uh, uh, it will be from, uh, from another prefix. So it's possible so to some for some websites to track you from different network and said, ah, you are the same person, that you're connecting from this one, from that one, from that one. And I know that you are the same one because you are this part of the last part of your address is always the same. So the people realized that this was, this was a privacy concern. And they uh, extend uh, the algorithm for getting address to use something that we call uh, privacy extensions. And this address is precisely the generated by the privacy extension of uh, uh, the IPv6 uh, gener auto-generated addresses. Uh, this address change, I think, uh, depends of the operating system. I think change every three hours. So in three hours, it will be different. Uh, there are different algorithm, algorithms to generate uh, uh, always a random uh, address. Uh, I, don't, I, I, don't, I haven't really go into the, the, the algorithms, but uh, 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 the, well, the, the, the RFC says uh, some recommendations. But the important part is it, it, that it's gonna change. And also I wanted to show you that you will have at least, well, depending on the operating system, I guess that uh, Windows 7 and Windows 8, they, they, they do similar things that this. Linux, some distribution, uh, distribution uh, do that. And um, uh, some other uh, operating system does uh, similar things. So uh, you will have three addresses. So that's why you have three. One is the, the link local. The other one is the, 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 the generated by the router advertisement and the, and the global uh, prefix. And another one is it will be a random uh, address or, or part of that address will be random. If you see, this part is the, is, is the same in both addresses because this is the prefix that the uh, router is advertising and we are only changing the ID or the, uh, the identification of the, of, of the interface for a, um, a privacy uh, extensions. Also, you see here, it says temporarily because it's gonna change eventually in three hours, four hours, it's, it's gonna change. This one never, it, it, it won't change ever. So. Um, uh, it's useful because, for example, I can uh, sel select some, uh, I, I can configure filters, for example, and force a connection with this address and then uh, the, the firewall filters will be e easier to, co to config. Uh, but I, I, I wanted to show you, well, how would you will check uh, that you have a, 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 an IPv6 uh, address in, in, in your computer. So the next part, now that, uh, well, I explained a bit this and, and, and you are a bit more awake after lunch. Let's, let's explain about DNS because DNS is the key part to understand uh, how a computer will select V4 or V6 to connect to, connect to, the, to the internet. So basically, uh, we had talked uh, about uh, IP, uh, DNS, so we know that what is DNS. Uh, we know that that, 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 that is a, a, a database, a distributed database that have a relation between uh, IP address and names and, and we use the DNS because well as a humans we want to, to see names, not numbers. That is uh, hierarchical, uh, so the, the we have the top level domains, then we have the domains and then we have the, the host names. So it's, it's, it's hierarchical and is redundant uh, or has redundancy because uh, when one of the, of the nodes fails, it's possible to have another take that operation. So it's, it's, it's a very redundant, distributed, and hierarchical database, uh, basically. Uh, and this is important. See the, 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 um, the DNS as a database. So it's a database that holds information about addresses and names, and it's gonna be very important in, 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 in a moment. So, well, we, there were so many uh, examples during this meeting about uh, how this work. So we have the resolver, basically our computer trying to resolve a name uh, to an address. So it will, uh, the resolver, uh, it will go and ask uh, 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 um, uh, uh, a name server for a name. The name server is gonna go to the root and ask for uh, the resolve record of that name in this, in this case. Uh, 
And uh, the name server, uh, do you want to tell you? Well, I cannot tell you the whole answer, but I can tell you who is the top level domain of, of, of that one. Well, in this case, the root, well, holds information about different uh, top level domains. In this case, uh, two, CC, two CCTLDs, in this, uh, France and, 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 and Germany, and the gtld.com, so check the information from France and it uh, replies with uh, that information. So the name server now knows the route. Now it knows that it has to ask to, for, uh, to, to France or to dot .fr uh, about uh, the, 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 the other part of the, of the name. So it goes and asks for the same uh, domain name to dot .fr. FR is going to reply, well, I don't know about the whole name, but I can give you the response for ASO.FR. Uh, so in this case, well, it's in, in, the, in the other level of the hierarchy. It will reply. And then it will uh, ask uh, finally, well, in this case, uh, through the other DNS, and it will reply finally with the, with the final name of the G6 uh, ASO uh, AFR. So that's how the, the, the informa information flows in, in, in DNS. Now, the important part in IPv6 about DNS is, well, the DNS work exactly the same. There are no differences. So it, it's going to communi communicate exactly this in the same way. The big difference is that in IPv6, we'll have another type of record. Uh, we call uh, resource records to those piece of information that tell us something about a domain name. In the case of IPv4, an A record is uh, the record that holds the uh, relationship between a name and an IP address. So in this case, ns3.nic.fr has an A record that points to that IP address, 192.134.049. In the case of IPv6, we are going to have something that we call quad A or quadruply, quadruply A record because it has four A's. Uh, don't ask me why four A's and not three or I, I don't know exactly the, 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 the story behind. But, it, but it's a different type of record. So in this case, the quad A record points the same name but uh, to an IPv6 address. So that's how computers, they can decide if they uh, want information about B4 or a B6, if they ask about an A record, the DNS is going to reply with a with IPv4 address. If they use a quad A record, they are going to reply with an IPv6 address. So, and basically that's almost everything about DNS and, 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 and IPv6. I'm going to show you here other, another example. So, for example, if I want to know uh, the uh, address that is related with the name of, for example, lagnik.net, I can use a, a, a co a, a, an application, it's called DIG. It's a very useful and powerful application to troubleshoot uh, DNS. In this case, DIG, and I'm going to ask w oh, www.lagnik.net. If I don't do anything else, sometimes DIGs reply what they want to reply. So the recommendation is always to ask for a, spe a specific uh, record that you want to know. In this case, I want to know the IPv4 address of lagnik.net. So I use, uh, sorry, I, I did it too quick. Qu quick. So the command will be dig lagnik.net A. So it will reply and it will tell me, okay, the uh, A record for this name, it's this one, and the address is this one. Also, it's going to tell me more information about the DNS that we have configured and uh, some additional information. It, it's going to give me the, uh, the uh, quad A and the A records of each one of the DNS. So I didn't ask for that, but uh, normally dig, it, it, well, it, it, it thinks that it might be, be useful for you. So that's uh, how I can uh, uh, request for an A record and a quad A, it's going to be exactly the same, but instead of being an A record, it's going to be a quad A record. So I, I do the same. Uh, it's over here, the, the command. 
and here is the response. And then we have lagnit.net, quad A record, and this is the IPv6 address. So this is the information, and I can ask for this information using v6 or v4. For example, there is another command in dig. If I use the flag uh, minus four, I can force uh, um, the uh, uh, um, force dig to use v4 instead of v6, and that the transport of the, inf of, of, of the packets that are gonna query that information, but the information could be anything. So, so my point is that you can ask V6 information using V4, and you can ask V4 information using V6. So there is not like a requirement that in order to get a quad A record, you have to use V6, no, it's not. So for example, in this case, I'm gonna force dig to use V4, so I can ask, for a quad A using before, and do you think it's gonna reply? Yes, it's gonna reply, no problem. Because there is, there, there is a very different, uh, uh, and sometimes it's, it's confusing for people, but there is a notion between the database, which is the DNS, and another is how do you transport a request for that database, could be before or B6. So in this case, uh, I use uh, before transport to ask B6 information. In fact, it's possible that you can support in your DNS quad A records, but your DNS is just before. So that, 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 that could happen uh, 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 as well. So I don't know if I have a DNS in IPv6. I think I, I don't have it configured, but let me try to do this. If not, we can try to fix it, which it will be interesting. Okay, I don't have a V6 DNS. So how do I get a, 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 a V6 DNS? Well, we can use a public one. So let's go here and do Google public DNS IPv6. So probably it's around here, the IP address that I need. Well, the V4 address is very easy to remember, but the V6 is uh, probably a bit more confusing though. So let's go into take this. Let's do a copy. This is um, this is are the DNS that are uh, got my, uh, that my computer got uh, with the DHCP. So let's add one. And let's add this one as well. and it should work now. Let's ask a uh, name record. There. So I use V6 uh, uh, transport. In fact, I can see that I, in fact, I use it, the V6 uh, DNS server because of this. So it's telling me which server it's using. Uh, this is the, uh, the record uh, that I request, lacnet.net and a record and this is the uh, information. So that's, that, that's how you can uh, use DNS in B4 and B6 to ask for B4 or B6 uh, uh, information. So let's go back to the, the, um, the presentation just to talk about PTRs, so the, the, the reverse, uh, um, uh, the reverse uh, uh, tree or the reverse uh, request. Uh, the A, record are the qu uh, quad A record points a name to an IP address. But also we can ask, okay, I have this IP address. Is there any name um, uh, configured to that address? When is that important? It's, it's important sometimes when you receive a connection, uh, for example, mail servers, they receive a connection from an IP and say, okay, who is this? This, this IP address. It's a spammer or it's a, a, a real server. So they use uh, the re reverse resolution to ask, okay, I have this address, does it have a name? And normally that name will resolve, for example, to mail.example.com or, or mail.yourcompany.com. 
so the, uh, we call that resolve record PTR, um, uh, and it, uh, uh, it's the same for V6 and V4, PTRs. There are not a PTR6 or quadruple, quadruple PTR. It's PTR is for V6 and V4, it's the same. And uh, uh, it's gonna give you the name related to an IP address. Uh, PTRs are a bit complex because you ask in the reverse, uh, uh, in the reverse uh, sequence. Uh, so you have this address. You can see the my arrow. You have this address. You know ask. You don't ask for for the this address. You are ask for the reverse uh, um, uh, the, the address in the reverse order. To identify if you are using um, B6 or B4, uh, it just changed, everything is under the dot .arpa uh, tree. Uh, for B6 is IP6, for B4 is uh, in address, or in a DDR. Uh, so for B4 is uh, in a DDR, and for uh, IP6, IPv6 is ip6.arpa. So we uh, put the address in a reverse order and we append ip6.arpa. In this case, you have to use, you cannot, in this, uh, uh, you cannot, um, uh, you have to use all the zeros. Uh, remember, in the, in the addresses in v6, uh, we can uh, um, uh, compress the notation. When we do a reverse resolution, we can't. So we have to use uh, all the zeros here, which sometimes make it a bit complex because we have uh, not 64 zeros, but we have, uh, we may have a lot. But it's basically the same. So we are uh, requesting uh, IP address information uh, linked to a, 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 a name. So in this case, uh, we can see what we have the root we have the top level domains. One of the top level domain is the dot .arpa. And in the dot .arpa, we have uh, different trees. Uh, the important, or the one that we are interested right now is the in address and IP6. Under IP6, uh, there are all the, IP, the IPv6 address. Under the in address, there is the uh, IPv4 address. Uh, the reverse uh, tree, is as, as, as I said, basically used for a mail to identify possible spammers, because normally uh, residential, uh, um, uh, or you don't expect receive mail from residential uh, addresses. So it's very kind of easy to, to, to identify that it's not a web server, uh, sorry, a mail server using the, the, the reverse tree. So it's one of the, the main uses of the uh, reverse uh, DNS. This case is just, well, giving you, you the example. And this is the same address that will be in the uh, inverse notation. If you see that there, the 92 is in this, in this sequence. And for B6, will be this, the same. Then for B6, we need to do the same, that address that we have there is the same one that this one, but this one is in the reverse order and it has all the zeros, which sometimes complicates the resolution, but you have to use it. There is no way to compress it. So that, that's how uh, the, the reverse uh, DNS work. Okay. So now, how my computer knows how to connect to the internet using B6 or B4? Well, basically, remember, we have two, two internets here. We have the IPv6 internet and we have the IPv4 internet. So basically, in this case, my computer has, has to have two addresses, what we call dual stack, because it, it has two, two stacks or, or addresses. So if we go back here, we see that we have IPv4 and IPv6. So how my computer is going to decide which one to use? Well, 
every time that I try to connect to a website, for example, www.lagnic.net, my computer is gonna send two requests, one for a quad A and one for an A record. If it receives back that the, a, the quad A record has a content, for example, in this case, a, 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 an address, it's gonna use IPv6. If, if it doesn't, it's gonna use IPv4. Kind of that, but l leave, it, l leave it for now in, 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 in that way. So if my computer uh, wants to connect to Twitter, it's gonna send two requests. For twitter.com, it's gonna ask for the quad A and the, uh, the A record. In this case, it's just gonna receive an A record because the quad A doesn't exist. So it's going to connect to before uh, in that moment. For example, to Google, Google, prob well, Google has an a, a quad A record. So my computer, every time that I connect to Google, is gonna ask for the quad A and the A record. If the A record appears there in the, in the, in the reply, it's gonna use the, the A record. It looks simple, right? But what happened if I have an A record, a quad A record, but that side doesn't have IPv6, so the IPv IPv6 between my computer and that uh, website is, is broken. Well, my computer will try to connect to v6, and that was a problem that we have two years ago, uh, that there were many sites testing v6, but it wasn't configured properly. So what it happened is that uh, the computer tried to connect in IPv6, and it will wait for 30 seconds to uh, fall back to IPv4. And it will do that for every little uh, object uh, uh, that you have in a web page, because each one is probably pointing to, 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 a, to, to a website, probably the same, but it's gonna time out every, every, every time. So there were no mechanism. So if you had a broken website, will it, what you, go, you were uh, uh, experienced as a, using, as a user was that it was very, very slow. So that was not good. So the ITF developed something that is called happy eyeballs, so happy eyeballs. So the algorithm uh, basically works kind of the same that the other one, your computer, it will request a quad A and an A record. If it received the quad A, it will try uh, uh, IPv4, sorry, I, it will try first IPv6, but if IPv6 doesn't respond in, in 300 milliseconds, it will uh, use IPv4. So basically what it does is try to connect to it in, in both protocols, and the one that connects faster, well, with a little bit of advantage V6, it will, it, it will use that one. So if you have a web uh, server that uh, has a quad A record but it's not responding, the request for V6 it will be, uh, it will time out in, in 300 milliseconds and before it will, it, 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 it will be used. Uh, if the website is well configured but the response is too slow, for example, one second, before will be used. So that's why sometimes your computer or my computer is connecting in before and sometimes it's connecting in V6 even though the website has V6 enabled. So that's, that's why we saw that some that even uh, this the website have v6 it was connecting in, in, in before for that reason because for that connection uh, before uh, was faster than than than, 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 than v6 uh, the uh, the um, uh, decision uh, is uh, remembered uh, by the computer or by the stack for, well, the specification, I think, says that 10 hours, so it will be catch that result. So if, if the, the, the result was that V6 was better than before, it will remember that decision for, the, uh, for 10 hours. But it happened that Apple and Microsoft, well, they did what they wanted to do. So basically, they didn't respect the, the standard. And uh, we don't exactly, I don't exactly know how, for how, I think Microsoft, remember the decision for um, a, a month, and uh, uh, Windows, uh, Mac, Mac OS, 
I don't remember, if, I, I think it's 10 hours or something like that, but uh, we, d we don't know because uh, there are no specification from the operating system. Uh, Apple is, is very sec uh, secret in, 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 in that. Also, uh, the Mac uh, doesn't give any advantage to V6. So the first one that responds is the, the first one that use. That from a user point of view is good, but from the uh, perspective to encourage to, to have more traffic in, in V6, it's not good because there are, uh, there may be times when V4 is uh, used more than V6, even though that we have a perfectly well uh, connection that probably is a bit slower V6 than V4, uh, but uh, there is a, a hard decision, but uh, Apple didn't want to follow the, the, the specification. Microsoft follow, follow set kind of a, uh, well, but the the thing is that the user will feel that the internet is better because the, the V4 is broken or the V6 is broken, well, you have the other one to, to work. Uh, the problem is for you as a network admins because uh, if uh, a user uh, calls you and, tell, and tell us, tells you, okay, uh, I cannot connect uh, to Google or to Google is very slow, probably you will need to know uh, which protocol is using V4, V6, and probably it won't be so easy to detect. Also, if you are testing applications, uh, it will be difficult to know uh, if the problem is V6 or V4. We have a, 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 a story, uh, well, a, a experience, uh, a couple of years ago or last year, we have a service that we were deploying in V6 and V4. And uh, there were some users that call us and tell us that uh, the site wasn't working and we try it and it was working. But some user called us and it was not working. In the end it result that uh, B4 was, was well configured but B6 wasn't. But we were doing the, 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 uh, the, the test using a, a machine uh, or a computer that support a happy eyeball. So it was, well, B6 was not working but uh, it was connected in, in, in B6. The user they have a very, uh, an older computer uh, and uh, that didn't support uh, happy eyeballs and it has uh, the, or it had the experience of the 30 uh, seconds timeout. So for them, the, or for, for, for his or her, it was, it, it was very slow. And that kind of the problem that you will face, face in the future uh, when you are, uh, um, uh, when you are uh, troubleshooting B6 and B4 because sometimes you don't know which one is uh, do you, your user, which protocol is, 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 is using. So for example, sometimes it makes sense to have a name for B4 and a name for B6, so you can force, uh, uh, in, well, a, a test name. It's not like always to have a test name. It's like to have, uh, I don't know, www.b4.lagnit.net uh, just f uh, with an A record ana www slash b 6 lagnetnet just with a, a record just to test and, and tell somebody, okay, test before or test B6 so we make sure that, uh, that, uh, um, that uh, you are connecting in before or, 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 or B6. I don't know if that makes sense uh, a bit, uh, what I'm telling you about the uh, happy eyeballs and what, what's the problem. It's, it was clear enough? Well, hopefully, if no, well, as, 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 as any question. Well, let's see uh, how you will configure uh, routers. Um, do, you, uh, do you have experience uh, working with routers? Uh, is anybody with routing experience? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, there. <laughs> well, uh, it's basically the same, it's, 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 it's a very, um, You will see that the configuration routers doesn't change too much. I, I'm gonna go very quickly on this. Well, this uh, presentation that it will be uh, online, well, it, it's online already. You go to sixdeploy.eu from the European Union. Uh, you will find all this material there in the, in the, in the website in PDF. So this contain a configuration from Cisco, Juniper, and some other uh, um, 
uh, routers. We just go very quickly uh, with Cisco and, and, and Juniper. Uh, so basically, uh, you have to uh, configure IPv6 in the interface. Uh, v6, uh, sorry, v4 is uh, enabled by default, but in v6 you have to enable it. So you go interface, gigabit zero, internet zero, whatever, IPv6 enabled. And then you configure uh, your IPv6 address with the common IPv6 address, uh, uh, the IPv6 that you want to, con uh, to use. Uh, in this case, we have a, a, an example. We, we, we can see that the configuration for V6 and V4 is almost the same. Uh, for V4, we just use IP because it, wa it was the legacy original protocol in Cisco routers. And then for V6, we use IPv6 address and then uh, the address. In this case, uh, we don't use a mask. As you see, in V4, we use a mask, the complete mask. In V6, we use a uh, decider notation. Uh, in this case, it's a, a slash 64. That is the default configuration that you have to use in, in, in all your subnets. Uh, unless you have a, a, a very good reason to use a slash 26, 27, or something uh, shorter, uh, uh, we recommend to use a slash 64. Even for point-to-point um, -point links, sometimes it's better to use 64. There is, uh, um, a, a, there is some um, contentious uh, arguments uh, uh, to use 64 or something uh, larger uh, in point-to-point in, in -point -point links because, well, you are using just two addresses of a whole 64. So it's, it's some people say that it's too much, but it's, uh, it's just easier to, co to configure. In this case of uh, uh, LANs, always a 64 because normally is what you 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 will have to use uh, this in this case is a is a tunnel for example if you don't have native uh, uh, native uh, configuration uh, for your service provider you can configure a tunnel for example with hurricane electric so the configuration will be interface tunnel one zero uh, any number you will use tunnel source, the interface that you want your source. For it could be an Ethernet or a, or, a, or, a, or a serial interface because you need a source address for, 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 for that. And the destination, it will be the IP address uh, that Hurricane will provide you uh, to connect. And uh, the IPv6 address, also Hurricane Electric is going to provi provide you with a 64, so you, you can connect in this link. This link is going to be like a serial link. It's going to be to be a point-to-point -point link, but it's a virtual point-to-point -point link. So basically, you configure the same, and you have to uh, configure the mode. Uh, normally, we use IPv6 6 IP, that is uh, IPv6 in, 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 in IPv4. So it's a, uh, the, the, that the, the, the common encapsulation. That's encapsulation is how we are going to encapsulate that packet to send it uh, to, the, uh, to the internet. Uh, we will go uh, uh, to tunnels in a, in a moment so you can understand pretty well how a tunnel would work. This is uh, to configure a tunnel on IPv6, so th there is not much difference, but uh, in this case it will be a, a, an IPv6 tunnel uh, for IPv6, so probably it's just to, uh, uh, I don't know, there, there could be some uh, use of, of, of this. Uh, to configure uh, routing protocols, uh, you have to enable the unicast routing. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, in the past, uh, you had to, uh, to write that command in Cisco routers because it was disabled by default. I'm not sure if it's enabled by default uh, now, but uh, maybe uh, it will be safe to, well, just to configure uh, IPv6 unicast routing. It's global configuration. Uh, for example, you want to configure a static root, is IPv6 root, the prefix, prefix len, and the next hop. In this case, uh, is a default route, IPv6 route default to that uh, IP address that probably is the, the, the router in the other, in the other side. Uh, so there's no difference with, with, with before. Uh, before is exactly the same configuration, except that you use IP instead of IPv6. So there is no, no major difference here. 
Uh, this o OSPF, uh, routing protocols, so um, interface Ethernet zero, uh, you configure an address and you configure uh, an area of uh, OSPF. Uh, in this case, uh, is uh, an area zero, zero and is the uh, OSPF uh, one. So uh, it's different because in before, uh, you don't have to configure uh, OSPF in the interface. Uh, in IPv6, you have to, but uh, besides that, the configuration is, 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 is very, very similar. Uh, this is OSPF version three. Uh, if you have OSPF version two in your network, uh, you will need to upgrade to version three. Uh, in the past, uh, version three didn't work on before. So if you had OSPF as your routing protocol, you have to use the version two for B4 and version three for IPv6, which it was a bit complicated. Uh, some uh, um, uh, service providers, they decide to migrate from OSPF to uh, ISIS because ISIS is family agnostic. So you can run B6 or B4 at the same time. Uh, with OSPF version three, it didn't use to support uh, B6. The new versions of OSPF version three uh, support, or there is an extension uh, to support B6 B4. So right now, OSPF version three uh, supports B4 or B and B6. There might be some old routers in your network that uh, with an old code for OSPF version three that probably don't support B4. So it's, 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 it's good to check uh, your router documentation, uh, the iOS version, to check if it support uh, B6 and B4, the OSPF version three. BGP, uh, not a major uh, difference. Uh, you have BGP router uh, ID, uh, you configure a route. Normally, BGP, the router ID, is a, a, an IP address. It's not, the ID is not an IP address, it's a, it's a 32, a bit a long ID. But it's very convenient to use an IPA, IPv4 address because it's 32 bit long. Uh, in B4, automatically it takes the, um, the ID from an interface. If you are only configuring a B6 or BGP with, uh, for B6, uh, it won't be able to take uh, that uh, ID because it doesn't exist because it, it, it's not working in before the router. So you have to, to introduce it, uh, introduce the, um, the ID uh, manually. But besides that, uh, the configuration is, is, is very similar. Then router VGP, the, I, the ASN that you are using, no changes. Neighbor, uh, the IP address of the, your neighbor in B6 remote AS, uh, you configure all your neighbors, and, this, and then we have a difference. In B4, we don't have to do anything else. In B6, we have to configure the address family, IPv6, that common, and then again, we need to configure the neighbor, the same IP address that we have uh, above, and we have to activate it. And all the configuration of that neighbor, it has to be there, filters, uh, other stuff, uh, route maps, everything it has to be on their address family IPv6. Why Cisco did that? I don't know. So probably it will have easier just to have it there in the same configuration. I don't know, there probably some reason. Uh, well, we didn't ask Alvaro, but probably next time we can ask him why change it uh, in that way. Then uh, network and the network that you want to announce in, IP in, in, in the internet with BGP and uh, no synchronization, and then you exit the configuration, and, and, and basically that's all. So there is not, it's a bit tricky because of that, the ad, of, about the address family, but besides that, it's very, very similar to the IPv4 uh, configuration. Uh, routing uh, filtering, uh, very similar, the same. Instead of using IPv4 IP prefix list, in this case, we use IPv6 uh, prefix list, in this case, uh, we deny everything, uh, not major difference, uh, just the common instead of IP, IP is IPv6, and that we are using a, um, a IPv6 addresses, but this access list, or well in this case prefix list, there are the same, there are not major difference, so it's, it's, it's not big uh, difference here as uh, neither. Uh, 
Uh, ASLs, similar instead of IP, IPv6, access list, and then uh, the name of the, of the access list, then our sequence or permit and deny. Again, before, uh, simi very similar to, to, to before. And uh, to apply that filter to an interface is uh, IPv6 traffic filter and the name of uh, our uh, access list in or out. So no major difference uh, here. Commands for BGP, uh, show BGP, uh, show BGP IPv6. Uh, here it, it changed because in, in, in B4 is show uh, IP BGP. In, in B6 is, is, is show BGP only. Uh, for example, uh, to check the 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 the, uh, the neighbors, you will use uh, show BGP IPv6 uh, the address of uh, neighbor and the address of your neighbor, and then you have some command, the same command that you have in B4 for for, for BGP, uh, how to check on a, an IPv6 route, an interface, and uh, and some neighbors. So there is not big difference here. It's it's, it's just some uh, longer addresses, uh, but besides that, there is no, no major difference, and you have to just use to the commands, but the, the logic uh, behind the iOS commands is, is, is the same. Uh, Juniper, uh, basically, uh, the, the configuration of Juniper are a bit cleaner than Cisco because it's, 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 it's the, the commands are newer, and, 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 um, and they born uh, with IPv6 in, uh, in, in mind. Cisco IOS is, is, is kind of old. Uh, uh, that's why we have the difference between IP and IPv6. With Juniper, it's, 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 it's a, a, a more natural, the, 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 the command. But uh, basically, Juniper, uh, the same as Cisco, support everything in, in, in V6, so there is no, no major problem here. So the, um, the uh, how to configure an interface, very, very similar than, 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 bis, than before. We go interface, the name of the interface, the unit, the family, uh, in this case, family init is for uh, B4. So for B4, well, it will be the address uh, of, the, of, the, of the interface and in insider uh, notation. And uh, family ISO, well, that will be an, an ISO uh, address. Uh, and family in net six is for IPv6, so we will go and we configure the address of the uh, interface. So it's, 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 it's the same. You can see there that you just, you just change the family. For IPv4 is family inet address, uh, the length. Uh, for, family, uh, for IPv6 is family inet six and the uh, address uh, uh, and, the, and, and the length. So no, no, no big deal here. Uh, routing protocols uh, is very similar. Uh, router advertisement, uh, then uh, interface uh, name, uh, prefix IPv6 prefix, prefix length. Uh, then to configure a tunnel, uh, the, 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 the next one is to configure a tunnel. Uh, you have the source IPv IPv4 addresses that you are going to use in your tunnel, the destination, that, probably that it will be the um, the IP of Hurricane Electric, for example, and then family INET6, and you configure the IPv6 address of your tunnel, the same as we did with Cisco. So they are very similar. The, the, the first time that you configure this probably is like, oh, what is going on? But if you have experience uh, in the past configuring Cisco routers or Uniper routers, you will see that that there are the same commands, so they are in a different place in the, in, the, in, the, in the interface. For example, here, static routes uh, uh, is a re, a rev, uh, inet 6 static, and then root, and then you will, uh, where do you want, which route you want to configure, the net hub, uh, the common net hub, and then the IP address of the net hub. Uh, for B4, uh, I don't remember exactly the common for B4, but I will, thing that is INET on, on only in, 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 in Juniper. Uh, in this case, uh, the, a, the, well, the second example is to discard uh, a route, for example, to null, is when you want to force, a, 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 like in BGP, that you need a, a prefix in your routing table, but uh, you don't want to route anywhere. You want to route 
that to null zero or to discard it, or, or like a filter, for example. Uh, but there are no big difference with uh, before. Uh, this is how to configure uh, OSPF. Uh, then you configure, well, you go to, to, to the command of OSPF version three, uh, your area, uh, you put there the interface where you, that you want to be uh, into the uh, routing protocol and the metric if you want the if you want some metrics there uh, also in this case is a passive interface that well doesn't really uh, play here in the in the OSPF but it's just a, a, a common as an example uh, for BGP also it, it won't be very different than before uh, you will go to the to the uh, global configuration of, of BGP uh, local AES uh, you configure the local uh, autonomous system and then you configure your group peers uh, and in your family INET6, you configure the IP addresses of your neighbor in V6 of the other side. Uh, in this case, we don't have the configuration for V4, but it, it will be the family, it will be family INET. So there are not uh, very, very uh, big difference here with uh, V4 and V6. Also, um, uh, with uh, policies or filters, uh, you go to the to the statements there, uh, policy statement. Uh, you put a name. Uh, you po you put term from outside accept or the na or well the name that you want from, and uh, you put all the IP addresses that you want to to, to filter, uh, and then uh, the sequence to accept or the or or, or reject. So there is not. Uh, if you are familiar with a uh, Juniper, uh, it will be kind of the same configuration. And this is how to configure, um, uh, sorry, how to check some command, show BGP summary, show route, advertise, advert BGP. In this case, uh, show BGP summary will show you all the configuration of BGP, not only B6, it will also be uh, before, uh, because as, as I said, uh, the, the Juniper commands are a bit more uh, agnostic uh, if they are B6 or, 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 or before. Uh, then show interface, show IPv6 neighbor, or show route, and, 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 and all the commands that you can uh, confi uh, well, you can check uh, to configure, uh, or to verify your configuration. Uh, this router, 6Win, I don't know. I have never configured it. Let me see if there is something interesting. Uh, FreeBSD, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in, in one of the com uh, configuration files, uh, you enable uh, IPv6, uh, you enable that uh, your uh, FreeBSD box is gonna be um, a, a router, and uh, that's how you can configure a, 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 a route for a, um, uh, for uh, for free BSD, uh, let me. Uh, I think I have here uh, an example of how to configure a tunnel in this co in this in, in, in the Mac that probably is not very different than uh, any other Unix thingy o OS. If I will, I, I used to to have this to well to to check this configuration every time that I went to a conference and I didn't have IPv6 and I wanted to configure a, a tunnel con with Hurricane Electric from my Mac, and then uh, to use that one to advertise to everybody and everybody will connect to a, a um, to the internet using V6 like a training tutorial or something like like that. So in this case, uh, well, I have to use the sudo uh, for uh, root access. Uh, 
Uh, if config uh, give uh, zero, it will be a, a, a tunnel interface for, for BSD uh, type OS uh, tunnel. Uh, and that, the first one, uh, I think will be this, the IP address that my computer has, in this ca case, the, the source address. Uh, and this will be the destination address uh, to Hurricane Electric, for example. Then uh, I will configure an IPv6 address in that in that interface interfa in that tunnel interface. Uh, this command uh, probably is probably this one is uh, this one doesn't have to go there. I think. Oh no 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 sorry sorry sorry. This is my uh, my my IP. And this is the IPv6 address of the other side of the tunnel. And this is the, the, the length of the prefix. Then I will bring the interface up. I will add a route here, the default route. So pointing to the other uh, side of the tunnel, so the, the router on the other side. Uh, I will configure uh, here uh, is the configuration for, a, for an Ethernet zero, so I can uh, advertise uh, that uh, uh, router, uh, or I can use router advertisement for, for that interface. So this is a prefix 64, because this is my Ethernet uh, uh, address. I will uh, uh, disable uh, the forwarding, or like to, to work as a router. Uh, and then this is uh, the command, then uh, be careful to use it, because in this one, you will uh, start advertising IPv6 to the network. And if you are not, uh, if you don't properly configure this, uh, all the traffic will go to you and probably you will be a, a, a bottleneck or you will, or you won't uh, uh, forward that traffic. So this one, ju just do it after you verify that the routing is working and your IPv6 is, is working because basically you are telling everybody, hey, I'm an IPv6 router, send me your traffic because I will connect it to the internet. That command is to, uh, to start the router advertisement protocol, that we, the, the protocol that we uh, review before going to launch, uh, that it will send the, the router advertisement. So every computer connecting to the internet, uh, or you will respond to every computer trying to connect to the internet saying, hey, I'm a router, I, I know IPv6, send me your traffic. So be careful with that comment. Sorry, with that command, and uh, this uh, probably just uh, well, I think this just uh, 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 another route. I don't know why, because this is the the, the, the important one, and well, I have some other configuration, but uh, probably it's not very different than uh, if, if if you are used to uh, configure routers in Linux and and and, and, and other OSs. Uh, probably it's not very different the configuration. It's just that you use another family, inet6. And then, well, the prefixes are a bit um, uh, a, 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 a bit longer than, than than before. Let me show you uh, something about tunnels because we have be been talking about tunnels, and uh, I, I haven't explained what what a tunnel is. Let me just find the um, presentation. I found the PDF, but I'm trying to find um, the PowerPoint. Yeah. Well, this is a more general uh, presentation. We have covered some of these uh, uh, technologies. 
Uh, the first one that it talks about is dual stack that we have talked about it. Uh, but uh, well, let's do a, 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 a review. So dual stack, so basically uh, dual stack, it's what we are using right now, that you have IPv4 and IPv6 in the same interface, and uh, it's the easiest way to configure IPv6, because you just install V6 and V4 and let your computer take the decision to which one to connect, and, and, and it's, it's very easy. Uh, it's it's, it's the, the de facto way to configure IPv6. The drawback of a dual stack is that uh, in the future you won't be able to configure dual stack because there won't be IPv4 uh, ad enough IPv4 addresses. So you will need to do some uh, not or uh, not way to configure uh, IPv6 in order to well to have more IPv4 addresses. So, but right now dual stack is the easiest uh, way to uh, connect to the uh, IPv6 uh, internet. Uh, well, the issues that uh, we, we, we said is that um, uh, uh, it only works when you have IPv4. And uh, we mentioned that uh, this is a bit uh, a bit old that um, the that it checks for the quad A record and uh, it will uh, um, try to connect and it will time out if the, uh, the, the, the connection doesn't work after 30 seconds, which is very bad for the user. But right now we have happy eyeballs that uh, the timeout will be, the timeout is uh, 300 milliseconds, which is uh, not uh, noticeable for the user. And also the, the another important part is that the computer remember that decision and doesn't ask every time for the same question. So you can remember the, 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 the uh, which protocol was better before OB6, or it remembers if, 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 if IPv6 was not working, and uh, it will improve much, much more uh, the, the, the user experience. Uh, so tunneling, that's what I wanted to cover. To cover. So imagine that you want to connect to the IPv6 internet, but your service provider doesn't provide uh, IPv6 to you. So what you can do is to create a tunnel. So basically a tunnel is like a virtual link uh, or a IPv6 virtual link using IPv4. So in this case, we have, for example, two offices or this in this side is a uh, hurricane electric that in the other side is uh, your office, for example. So basically what you wo go are gonna do is to interconnect all those uh, those two networks with a virtual link that we call tunnel. So basically what we are gonna do is to encapsulate all the IPv6 packets in IPv4 packets and we'll send it uh, through the IPv4 internet. When they reach the destination, the destination is gonna take those IPv4 and IPv6 packets and it will strip the IPv6 part and it will leave the IPv4 intact and then will send it to the network. So this is like a, like a, I don't know, like a in packeting, uh, packeting uh, packets uh, to transfer from one technology to the other. Uh, the drawbacks of this one is that, uh, well, you have some overhead here because, well, you have to, 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 to pack a, um, a uh, the, 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 the connection, so you, you, you have to do processing there. So that processing takes, ta ta takes some time. The other uh, thing is that probably that, that, that forwarding there is gonna be uh, on s in software, so it's gonna be a bit slower than, that, than in hardware, so that's another disadvantage. Uh, and the other disadvantage is that probably uh, that connection goes to, 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 to uh, uh, many places, uh, or it has to go to, to uh, another place in order to reach the destination. Let me try to uh, imagine, well, you are here in, in, in Aruba, so you connect to a tunnel uh, to Hurricane Electric to the IPv6 internet that is in Miami. So you have to create the tunnel from Aruba to Miami. For example, so you want to connect the other office, for example, using a tunnel, even though that you are maybe in, in B4 in the same building the, the IPv6 addresses, they have to go to Miami to communicate. So the, the, the path is not the best because they have to go there because it's a virtual. Uh, the, the, the computers or the routers, they will think that they are uh, connected uh, by two hubs. But in reality, 
uh, because in IPv6 you, you only see those two hops, but in reality it has to go many, many hops in IPv4. So the path here, it, 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 it might be not the best path. So that's another disadvantage that have tunnels. But the great advantage is that even if your service providers don't uh, support IPv6, you can start trying uh, using IPv6 uh, and, and, and start testing and uh, installing your first computers in your, in, in your company, your first web server, maybe a test web server, not a production web, web server. But it will give you the, 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 um, uh, the first knowledge and the first, the, 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 fir the first experience to, 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 to work on IPv6. Uh, I think that most of us that have uh, been working in, in, in IPv6, uh, we started uh, configuring tunnels because it was the only way uh, to connect to the, to the internet in V6. So there are, they, they have the disadvantage, but uh, uh, there are, there are uh, um, uh, very good for this, this, this kind of uh, on it. Uh, so, for example, in this case, it explains uh, how uh, the packet is go is is is, is gonna uh, be sent. I think there is a this, there is the uh, this uh, uh, example. Uh, in this case, we are connecting uh, these two routers. So one is gonna have uh, the tunnel destination is gonna for for the the uh, the node A. The tunnel destination is going to be the 120, 101, uh, and uh, they are connecting uh, uh, this IPv6 network, the 2001DV811, and uh, in this case, all the connections of that network, it will be encapsulated for the dual stack router node A. In B4, it will send by the dual stack router node B, and it will deca de encapsulate, it will take those uh, encapsulation out. Uh, it's a shame that we don't have like a, 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 like a very graphical uh, um, uh, example because it's, 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 it's I, I think you will better understand uh, how this happened. Uh, normally we have like a, like a board to, to, uh, to, 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 to show that process and it's a, a, a bit more uh, schematic. But basically, what you need to understand here is that it's a virtual link, and it will help you to connect uh, to IPv6 using uh, uh, IPv4. Let's talk a bit about uh, security. Well, there are uh, IPv6, uh, uh, it was designed with the security in mind. In fact, IPsec, uh, born for IPv6, and then it was uh, uh, recycled by to use in, in, in before. But there are some things here that uh, we can use in IPv6. One is uh, IPsec. The other one is uh, the cryptographically generated addresses. So instead of using dual uh, the MAC address, we use some uh, random addresses. There are not; these are not the privacy addresses that that's the pri or the privacy extension. That's that that's other thing. And we have secure neighbor discovery in order to uh, um, secure the interactions uh, between the routers, for example, to avoid to have a rogue uh, routers that can uh, send bogus information in the network and hijack. Uh, information we use send. Uh, the problem with send is that we use uh, public key uh, cryptography, so you have to install certificates in the, in every computer and uh, in the routers. And um, there are 
there are a, a, a few, last year there were no open source or uh, software for Zen. I don't know if there is any uh, open source that you can use. Uh, so that's another another inconvenience, inconvenience that there are no free software to, to use with Zen. But probably today there are, I, I haven't checked. And uh, there are some other uh, security things. Uh, uh, there are um, uh, things uh, that we want to point out in B6. Uh, let me try to, for example, there are some myths and, uh, for example, some, some pe people said that IPv6 is more, is, is more secure than, than, than before. That's not true. Before and V6, there are uh, the same as, the, there are the same. There is no one that is more or less security. Uh, in fact, V6 could be a bit less secure because uh, we are talking about new software development, uh, new uh, operating systems, uh, and it might introduce some uh, problems in the, uh, in the network. Uh, but one of the things that uh, people said, okay, IPv6 is more secure because you because it's very hard to scan uh, IPv6. Well, in V4, normally these nets are around 200, 500, maybe 1,000 nodes. So it's quite easy to do a brute force uh, scanning and, and, and to, to get some information. In V6, we have a, a two at uh, 64 uh, possible uh, possible IDs for nodes. So doing a brute force scanning, it probably will take like uh, some hundred or thousand years just to scan one slash 64. So, so people said, well, th that's unfeasible to do it. Well, but it result that uh, we are humans and uh, well, brute force attack is not the best way, definitely. But uh, we are humans, and normally, uh, which number do you configure in your IPv6 host? Probably the same ID that you configure, at least manually, that you configure in your um, uh, IPv4. If you check, for example, the LACNIC web server, uh, the ID, uh, if we go here, uh, if we do a, Quad A, if you check, is the 147, if w sorry, the A, if we check the, four, the quad A, is 147. So it's not very, if, if you know the V4, it's there is a lot of uh, uh, probabilities that you're using the same for V6. So then you're reducing the scanning. Uh, also, we use the MAC address, and uh, the MAC address, one part of the MAC address is well known because it's the vendor that uh, of the of the of the of the card so then instead of trying to f to figure out uh, 64 bits probably if you know the company if it's a target attack you know that that company is using a uh, hp uh, network card so probably i can reduce my uh, my uh, my 64 uh, bits attack to a 24 bits attack which is not easy but is more feasible than 64. So there are some methods, well, what I want to, to, to point out is that there are some methods that, uh, that make us, uh, uh, or they make hackers, uh, or hackers can use to scan or partially scan uh, a, a network. Uh, there are some papers in the ITF and uh, some research paper uh, or people trying to, uh, um, well, to improve this uh, scanning mechanism. In fact, I think that uh, Nmap it has some mechanism to make it easier to scan a network. There is one research student that is using, uh, is, is, is he's doing a, his a master degree thesis, trying to find a, a, a way to scan a much a faster a networks. Uh, it's, it's a student, uh, I'm not the, uh, the uh, the assessor of the of, of, of the of the thesis, but I one of the reviewers, and it looks promising and uh, it's interesting. Uh, 
that uh, how uh, that scanning is, it, it might be possible, probably it might not be perfect as in before. Uh, yet uh, brute force attack doesn't work, but uh, uh, um, uh, there is uh, some ways that you can you, you, you can improve this. Uh, another of the of the scanning uh, you can in a, a, as in a, a in B6 uh, you can send uh, if you are in the same link than the DHCP and the uh, well if you are in the link uh, or you have an attack machine in, in the link you can know the IP address of routers, servers, and some other devices that respond to some of the multicast address. So it's, it's, it's trivial to do that, but the problem is that as attacker, you have to be inside the network. So it's, 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 it's there is difficult to remotely uh, exploit these vulnerabilities, but it's possible if you are inside uh, the network. Let me try to find, uh, I think that there is a, a good slide that, uh, talks about all these uh, problems. All right, I have another presentation, more concise. I think is, this is one is better. The other one, it was the six deploy, and it was a bit confusing. And, and because it was a bit confusing, we made our own, so that I, I found it. So, well, this is the, the, the difference that uh, comparing uh, before and, and, and B6 um, in, uh, in, in one just a slide. But we have talked about this, and, 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 and we can move forward. Uh, well, addressing uh, address resolution, uh, address resolution. Uh, in B4 uh, is done with uh, address resolution protocol, basically a broadcast. In IPv6, the, it doesn't exist uh, address resolution protocol. We use uh, neighbor, uh, neighbor discovery and uh, IC, ICMP uh, version 6 to create all these uh, tables of IPv4, IPv6 and hardware uh, addresses. Uh, uh, we, we have a in host auto configuration in B4, we have DHCP. In B6, we have a two ways, a Slack that is stateless and DHCP that is stateful. We talk about that. Uh, fragmentation uh, in B6, uh, sorry, in B4, it can be done by anyone, any intermediate, intermediate uh, router uh, can fragment and reassemble. In IPv6, only uh, the end nodes uh, can do that. Uh, IPsec uh, basically is, 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 is both in, 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 in both uh, protocols. In the past, IPsec used to be mandatory for IPv6. Right now, it's optional, so it doesn't have to be present in the stack. Doesn't mean to. It doesn't mean that you have to use it or not. It, 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 the, the mandatory thing it was to be uh, supported by, by, by the operative, well, by the stack. Uh, right now it's optional, so it's, it's not mandatory anymore IPsec. Now, the vulnerabilities and, uh, and attacks in IPv6. Well, there are some what we call inherent uh, vulnerabilities. Basically, is that we have less, less experience uh, working with IPv6, so we don't really know uh, many of the things that can happen as, as, as a network admins because we are with B6, probably we have 10 or 15 years working in B6, so we have a lot of experience, not as, uh, as, a, commu uh, as a community and as in individuals. Uh, and, and B6, we are new, so we don't know all the tricks that you can have in, in, or, or hackers can use in, 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 in B6. In B4, we know, and, and we have been trained to how to protect our networks. B6 is a new protocol, and we are start learning how to use it and, and, and to protect it. Uh, also, we have uh, protocol, uh, new protocol stack implementations that it's software. Software can have bugs, so uh, and, and, and that's our vulnerabilities. Also, uh, 
this is, uh, they are getting better, firewalls and intrusion detection system. Uh, now they are very strong in, BC, in B4. In B6 probably they are not as strong. Uh, there are some, pro perhaps some uh, intrusion detection uh, signature uh, that doesn't exist for, or don't exist for B6, but exist for B4. So we are getting better, but uh, there are some of the, or, or, or part of that experience that, uh, that we need to, uh, uh, well, to overcome. Uh, more complex networks, in some cases, uh, we, we dual stacks uh, is not enough, and we need to have tunnels there, and, and, and that's some point of, of, of failure and points of attack as well. And we have dual stacks, so basically we have two protocols. So the attacker can get into our network using B6 or B4, so we have to protect both of them. So that's another of the problems that we can have in security. Another of the vulnerabilities are in neighbor discovery protocol. Uh, basically, uh, a neighbor disco discovery protocol is instead of uh, a ARP uh, for B4, and uh <coughs> uh, instead of a, a broadcast, we use a, a multicast. And the vulnerabilities are that uh, we can attack the router uh, using a naval discovery package. In the before war, uh, we only have uh, 200, uh, or we have thousands of relationship between the uh, thousands of, of entries relating a MAC address and, a, a, and an IPv4 addresses. In uh, B6, we have per each uh, network, we have two at 64 uh, addresses. So it's very easy to attack a router and full um, and fill the, the memory of the of, of the router. Uh, there are some mechanisms that are uh, um, that uh, you can uh, use. One is to use send. I, I, I mentioned send is is, 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 a, is a bit difficult. You can monitor your naval discovery traffic and uh, you have static entries. And there is an, a, a new RFC. In this case, is is is, is uh, well, I put the name of the document, but right now is is is, is an uh, RFC, and uh, basically it defines uh, to router vendors how they can protect against uh, neighbor discovery uh, attacks. In auto configuration, we have, as we said, two flavors, st uh, stateful and stateless. In uh, a stateless, uh, the router send uh, information about the network, but you can have a rogue uh, routers that can send information maliciously or by mistake. So there are cases uh, where you are in a network, somebody gets in with their laptop, a geeky guy, and he forgets about the command that they have in the, na in the, in the, in the, in the laptop, and they start announcing B6, and all the traffic, instead of going to the proper router, it goes to the attacker, that it can be uh, a bad guy or it can be uh, by mistake. Uh, so uh, there are different ways to protect against the, uh, against this. Uh, one is the RFC 6104 that uh, talks about uh, um, RA, RA uh, snooping. If I remember well, is a f functionality that you will have that you have in, in in switches, so they can detect that a router is trying to send a router advertisement. And if it's not the router that is that you configure you configure manually in your network, it will stop the, the, those the, those packets. Uh, anyways, there are some uh, some ways uh, to fragment that uh, the uh, router advertisement, and uh, very malicious guys they can uh, well inst uh, they can set uh, some broke uh, air, uh, router advertisement using fragmentations. But there is uh, this, this document in, uh, in, in the ITF that is trying to find a solution. As I said, uh, we are discovering things in B6 and we are trying to, to fix that. Uh, well, how to mitigate it? Uh, a, a router advertisement guard uh, that is uh, supported in some switches and also send uh, secure neighbor discovery could, could work. Uh, also transition me mechanism. Protocol 41 and tunnels that we were talking about tunnels. Well, somebody can uh, create a tunnel, advertise a, ra a, a router, and they can hijack your your traffic in your network. And uh, well, we don't we, we don't want that. So that's tunnels. There are also a source of of, of, of attack. 
Also, the end-to-end -end model. Uh, normally, uh, in, 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 in networks, we have the NAT. NAT is not a security device, but uh, in some way, it, it uh, hides uh, some of the network uh, from the outsiders. In the case of IPv4, uh, well, NAT is, is in almost in any enterprise network. In IPv6, we don't have NAT. Uh, all the machines are there, so you have to protect them with, uh, with firewalls, proper firewalls, and uh, with probably uh, host firewalls in order well, to protect those ma machines because they, are, they, they might be accessible from, from the rest of the, of the, of, of the internet. And uh, uh, to finish, uh, uh, another problem in IPv4 network is that uh, uh, you can have attacks in, in, in V6, in V4 networks. So if you are thinking that, oh, well, I'm not deploying V6, so I don't have to, 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 to worry about V6 security. Well, you have to, because uh, as I said, uh, well, computers, they have uh, IPv6 enabled by default. So if an attacker uh, have access to your network and start advertising uh, routing uh, and uh, DHCPs and some other information uh, to uh, configure the network, uh, th they can hijack the traffic. So uh, be careful uh, because even though that you don't have V6 in your network, uh, you have to be aware of what are the uh, security implication of V6 because somebody can use those uh, protocols uh, well to hijack traffic uh, even though that you don't have v6 uh, configured in, in in your network and uh, I think uh, uh, we were supposed to finish at 3 30 I extend 45 uh, 15 minutes more just to give you a bit introduction of security uh, these workshops we normally we uh, spend like two or three days with the workshop and with practice and the, for example this security presentation is like one hour long talking about little ab about the, 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 the protocols and why it's they are important and why are the the uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the vulnerabilities etc etc but uh, it was an introduction the material will be online if you want to review it and if you have any question well you have my email and you can contact me after after the after we finish and uh, anything that you need, uh, just send me an email and we will try to, uh, well, to respond to your question. And, and don't forget, try to deploy IPv6 for, for many reasons. And one is security as well, because if not, uh, you, you may have a problem. And, uh, and before going, I think Luisa is going uh, to give you some words and uh, some numbers about the presentation. No? No, well, what is Luisa's time? 